Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Spellbinders has just released some great new products and these cards feature two of them. The backgrounds were so much fun to make, I actually had to stop myself. I don't know how many cards I would have had. So four it is, featuring a brand new embossing folder called Splatter and an awesome die set, Painter's Palette. I'm working with acrylic paints on Bristol Smooth cardstock for this embossing folder. Although there are many acrylic paints that you can choose from, I really like the Distress paints. They just seem to be the right consistency for this technique. First thing that I do is I lay out my embossing folder so I make sure that I apply paint to the flat side. This first panel was actually my test piece, but I ended up liking it, so I kept it. I used a combination of Cracked Pistachio, Lucky Clover, and Mermaid Lagoon. The remainder of my panels I'm doing a little bit differently because I want those splatters to have some color. I'm starting off by applying some Distress Oxide inks to my panel. For this first panel, I'm applying the ink more or less in bands using Picked Raspberry, Worn Lipstick, Dried Marigold, and Shaded Lilac. For the background color, I chose Dusty Concord. I like to apply the paint to an acrylic plate. When I roll the brayer through the paint, I may not get complete coverage on the roller. To get that coverage, I'll do a quick roll on some paper towel. There's enough texture to move that roller along. I only do this to prime the roller, and after that, it picks up the paint fine. You do have to be careful, you don't want to get paint in the debossed areas, so I apply several thin coats of paint. This is the background, so the panel is laid color side down. After I rolled it through the die cutter, I opened it up. My panel had not shifted, so I just applied more paint because I did not get the coverage that I was after. So back through the die cutter again and opened it up, and I still wasn't happy with the result. The panel still did not shift, so I added more paint and ran it through a third time. Well, it took me a while, but I finally figured out that I needed a darker paint to get the coverage that I wanted. So I switched out to Mermaid Lagoon. I wasn't sure how this was going to come out, adding one color of paint on top of the other, but eh, we'll see how it goes. So this time when I went to open up the folder, the panel did stick a bit. So I used my craft pick to hold it down and opened it up and I was pleasantly surprised by the result. Not only did I have a panel that I could actually work with, I also learned a few things for the next couple of panels. I think this is my favorite background. It is so bold. I just started off with a panel of randomly applied ink using worn lipstick, wilted violet, shaded lilac, and candied apple. Now I find that red paint can be a little bit temperamental, so I fully expected that I would have to put on several coats, and I was right. I'm doing my embossing in the Spellbinders Platinum Machine. The sandwich that worked best for me was to place the embossing folder directly on the platform, and then a sheet of copy paper on top, followed by the top cutting plate. I did not use the bottom cutting plate. I roll the folder both forwards and backwards through the machine. To get a good impression, there should be resistance, but not so much that you actually have to put muscle into it. If the folder is forced through, it will buckle and be damaged. All right then, this is my third and final coat of paint for this panel. Again, I just want to mention how important it is not to load your roller up with too much paint. Multiple thin layers will ensure that paint does not get into those depressions. And just a reminder, if anything sparks your interest, you can find links to the products that I've used in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. For the last panel, Mermaid Lagoon paint was applied to a panel that was ink blended with mowed lawn, squeezed lemonade, and shaded lilac. 
Now that the backgrounds are done, I thought it would be fun to come up with my own sentiments for this set of cards. For the three panels that have the colored splatter, I chose a couple of colors that were used in those backgrounds to ink up some panels to die cut the letters from. For the panel with the white spatter, I chose one ink, Mermaid Lagoon, to create, create. The accessories for these cards will be die cut from a really sweet die set, Painter's Palette. There are a few cute elements with this set, but for these cards, I will just be using the paint tube and paint brush. There are four dies to create the paint tube. All of the tubes and the little detail that goes at the bottom of the tube were die cut from matte silver cardstock. The label and the cap were coordinated with one of the colors of the spatter for each of the cards. An impression on the tube die cut indicates where the label should be placed. There are three dies for the paintbrush. I die cut the handle from black cardstock and the ferrule from matte silver cardstock. The brush was die cut from the same color that was used for the accents for the paint tube. To add some dimension, I've used Darice thin foam strips down the handle of the paintbrush. All of the A2 top folding card bases have been matted with black cardstock. The splatter backgrounds were trimmed down to 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches and mounted on black sheet foam. And then on it goes to the card base. All of the lettering for the sentiments were mounted on foam die cuts. The ruler is aligned to the grid on my work surface so that I can get the letters for my sentiment on straight. Three of the four tubes of paint were foam mounted. It really depended on the arrangement of the tube of paint with the paintbrush. And then it's just a matter of arranging them on the panel this die set also includes four different styles of paint splotches. They were die cut out of colors to coordinate with both the paint tube and the brush on the paintbrush. And once all the lettering is in place, the rest of it comes together very quickly. And of course, there has to be a little bit of shine somewhere, so I'm using Nouveau Crystal Glaze on both the paintbrush and the splotch of paint. And that wraps up this set of four cards to inspire the crafters in our lives featuring Spellbinders, Splatter Embossing Folder, and this adorable die set, Painter's Palette. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. As always, I appreciate your visit.